if you will, and important in this case. Let's bring into our conversation as well, Latasha Brown, the co-founder of Black Voters Matter. Uh, Latasha, grateful that you can join us on this day. And let's pick up on the point Neamalika Henderson is making. Again, uh, this family is meeting uh, with the most powerful people in the United States government up on Capitol Hill. They're about to meet with the most powerful man in the world, the President of the United States, the first uh, woman of color who is the Vice President of the United States. So the, in that, uh, there is progress. The family is not being forgotten. But I want to read from this Axios Ipsos poll just out today to get at some of the core issues and the views from the African American, the black community on these big issues. Do police do police treat everybody equally? Only 5% of black Americans think that. Uh, are race relations, have race relations improved? Only 11% of black Americans think that. Calling police does more harm. More than half, 55% of African Americans in this country think you pick up the phone to call for help and you might do more harm than good. Uh, and 80% say there's still a lot of racism in the United States. L Latasha, one year after the murder of George Floyd, uh, where are we? You know, I think that when we're talking about progress, that's part of what I think has been the problem in America. I think we've all hidden behind this context of, of American exceptionalism, that if we can see a little progress, then we can ignore the systemic issue that has really not been addressed. That as we do see some le level and elements of progress, I think that it's wonderful that the family is meeting with powerful, some of the powerful folks in this country. I think it's wonderful that we've seen policy. The truth of the matter is we have not dealt with a systemic issue of while structural race has been part of the development, you know, has been part of the creation of police. And so what we're seeing now is we're continuously, every two days, there's another video that comes out where there's an abuse of power with state-sanctioned violence. And so I think if we want to take this opportunity, yes, there are small steps that have been made, but we are not uprooting. It's kind of like having weeds in the yard. You can cut the weeds down, you know, when you're mowing the grass, but until you uproot or kill the weeds, it will still, it, it will still uh, take over your yard. And so what we're seeing right now, we have got to deal with the systemic, ongoing structural issue that is dealing with policing in this country, the, the context of it, even when we're saying not just an issue of equity, but an issue of humanity. But at, at the end of the day, what we saw with George Floyd, what we've seen with numerous other cases, has really been an offense on the humanity, you know, of, 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 of our country, of people in general. And so I think that that's what we have to look at this with, too. We can have both. Yes, in the midst of there being some progress, that we have to really recognize that there's been, we're still fighting the same battle that we've been fighting in this country for over 400 years. Uh, which it's a very important contextual point. It's a critical contextual point that no piece of legislation is going to solve. No piece. The Civil Rights Act, you know, it, 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 enormous progress. Please don't get me wrong. But then you have to build trust on the streets. People have to change their behavior. People. Have, so a police reform bill, if they can get this to the finish line, Torini, uh, very important. If you can ban chokeholds, if you can make some changes, whether you eliminate qualified immunity or make some changes so that you, it's easier to bring police officers and police departments into court to hold them accountable. The three key leaders of the negotiation two Democrats and a Republican. Senators Booker, Scott, and Congressman Bass issued a joint statement. They wanted it done by this day. They can't get there. Uh, but they say they're still talking. We're still working through our differences on key issues. We continue to make progress toward a compromise and remain optimistic about the prospects of achieving that goal. Uh, to Latasha's point, uh, critical for the issue to be addressed, uh, but as a building block. If you can make changes, no chokeholds, treat people more fairly, uh, put some new training in for police, that's a stepping stone, hopefully, to building the trust in the community. Right, that's just one step. And, you know, they haven't gotten to that finish line yet. There is still a lot of work to be done. And the trick here, of course, is getting 10 Republicans to support whatever proposal they come up with and also keeping those progressives in the House who are already concerned uh, that uh, whatever proposal they come up with might not include those changes to qualified immunity that they want. So uh, there's still some details obviously left to be figured out, but it is one step. Um, and then, you know, in terms of the progress in the past year, we also do have an administration that's talking about racial equity more and more. They do talk about how that needs to be the center of uh, any sort of public policy. So, you know, of course, there's a long way to go, as the, the poll you cited just um, showed us. But uh, there have been some steps taken by lawmakers and by the administration um, that shows that there might be some changes as a result of what happened tragically last year. Right. And, and so, uh, Latasha, back into the conversation, if you would. I just want to put up on the screen here. We're having a Washington conversation. That's where the show is based, and the family is here meeting with high-powered officials in Washington. But this was an issue. We saw the marches all around the country. We saw promises from governors 
members, for mayors, from state legislatures. Here's what we know happened. There were 572 bills introduced across 46 states in the District of Columbia. So there were a lot of promises of action. 54 of those measures were enacted. These are different, different kinds of police reforms of proposals in 24 uh, states. So it, was, it is a big issue and was a big issue in the rearview mirror. I want you to listen. New York City is about to have a mayoral primary. Police reform is a giant issue right now. Defund the police is the wrong approach for New York City. I'm going to take a billion dollars from the New York City Police Department to shift that money to create trauma-informed care in our schools. I'm going to have a civilian police commissioner because we are going to make it a truly accountable police force to the public. Safety is not synonymous with policing. Our communities are over-policed and under-resourced. How would you say, Latasha, as someone who organizes voters, how has the conversation, both from a uh, animated to vote, uh, people animated to vote because these issues are front and center in their mind, uh, so from the voter perspective and from the politician's perspective, you hear a number of Republicans now saying, well, you see crime statistics going up. Uh, this is going to become a refund the police debate. You know, it is, you know, we're, we're really in a, this space that I feel like we've asked often go through the hamster wheel. You know, what, what I think is important is that defund the police for all its credits. The bottom line is we are talking about police reform. For a number of years, we could not even have that conversation. Not in a way that we were really talking about policy that would change the nature of policing in this country. And so the fact that we're talking about it, the fact that it is on the surface right now, and that it is a debate and that it is a key issue actually says something. And I think that that speaks to kind of the organizing, the movement work that was happening. But I also think that the underlying issue that creates this in the first time in the first place is that we have a uh, a problem in this country around not really dealing with the problems in community and dressing communities but just these punitive measures that is really based on how we punish how we can inflict more pain how we can put more people in jail how we can actually put more harsh sentences that instead of having an, a, a society that we're building that really is about redemption and and how can we actually build our communities stronger that we have this approach that the way that we'll solve any problem is just being punitive that's not worked well for us that to be a country that has this police force we're actually the most violent country in the in the world and so i think we have to really take a look back at really what is the core issue of what we're debating here it's not we should not at, at some point we are actually politicizing over politicizing people's lives now is a question of who is in control who can the police control they're going to get those bad people out of you and so we walk around that we're fearful of our neighbors instead of literally using those resources and really taking a step back to move beyond this political context, to really think about how can we build a society that people are respected and honored and that we are less violent. Instead, our approach to violence is let's create more violence. Let's give more violent um, tools to the police. And so I think that this is a debate that is really far beyond politicizing as a policy issue. This is really centered in a values issue. What kind of nation are we attempting to build? Natasha Brown, grateful for your insights in this important day. Tarini and Nia are going to stay with us as we continue the conversation.